even they are different in their ideas, even if they are not like you, but still it deserves a chance that you will talk and exchange opinions. Rebuilding Syrian Independent Media. Chloe Agnello, welcome. The ethical journalism for Syrian media, it lasted for five years. Um, it was quite a journey, right? Um, can, you, can you tell us why it started in 2016? Um, absolutely. Well, I think in order to explain why it started in 2016, it would be good to give some context on uh, what happened before that. Because actually FBU was working with Syrian journalists and on Syria uh, beginning from 2012. So it's actually been a 10-year journey from that point until now. Um, of course, at the onset of the conflict, there were a surge of citizen journalists that began to cover the events as they were happening in Syria, uh, cover the stories and the voices of people who otherwise were not being covered. And this was really a grassroots initiative. Um, so FPU had began really to work with these Syrian individuals who, despite the struggle uh, and immense loss, actually, that they were going through and that this story and journey in general holds, uh, had absolute resilience uh, to and bravery to continue doing and aspiring their work um, to, uh, to greater things. So this already laid the foundation a little bit from 2012 until 2016, where we were building this uh, set of ethical principles actually was created from um, the Syrian journalists themselves, and in, it was the ethical charter uh, which laid this foundation for a transitional media framework that they continued building. The ethical journalism for Syrian media really focused on the professionalizing process um, and really the organizational aspect of um, yeah, ensuring that trainings were given, that support was given um, to, for them to continue to uh, do their work in a credible way. And really our missions were the same. You know, We worked in a co-partnership with um, these Syrian individual, uh, individuals and with Syrian media organizations um, for, the, for the mission that we wanted to bring more reliable information to Syrian audiences. Um, and really in the broader vision of creating, creating civic space uh, in a context uh, where there wasn't one and creating this uh, pluralistic and independent media landscape um, yeah, in a context where it was very difficult to create. Yeah. So in attributing all their efforts actually to the Syrian journalists who started this way back in 2012 yeah. themselves. Yeah. So a 10 year long journey and, and a lot of capacity building mm -hmm. and support mm -hmm. um, to the media outlets. Yeah. yeah. With us, we have uh, Mona Abdel Maksud. She's joining us via Zoom. Mona, welcome. You've been working with partners on the ground uh, for very many years now. Um, I understand also that they come from very different backgrounds. And so dialogue has been a very important component of this project. Could you please tell us how uh, you have worked with them on dialogue? Of course. As you mentioned, dialogue is a the healthy approach in order to check uh, our differences. And in the beginning, it was really difficult just to let people understand and appreciate the importance of dialogue. When you are um, living in a place which is too fragmented, and also it, there are a lot of uh, different uh, internal and external political actors are affecting the situation, it's very hard to stay uh, neutral. And uh, it, it's, it tends to be very polarized. So uh, accepting being on one table and talking to each other was really a, magnific a magnificent achievement to be reached. Um, and also, if, if I'm talking about the Arab uh, culture in general, we tend to, uh, to talk more, not to listen. So also, if you are talking about um, convincing people that they should listen to each other and appreciate the importance of listening in order to find some common ground uh, for understanding, it was uh, not an easy mission. Yeah, um, listening is something I think uh, uh, all of us should do more, but uh, dialogue and the way you approached it in so many different ways, it's, uh, it's commendable. Uh, I also understand that inclusivity is something that uh, you focused on a lot during the program. For example, um, supporting women as agents of change. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, 
inclusivity is a, a very important uh, value that we are all defending in this project. And we believe that each one deserves a chance to be here and listen to, including also people who feel that they are a little bit away from media and they don't have uh, enough power to stand for and address their issues. Uh, those kind of uh, people, uh, including women, uh, we have tried a lot to support them and giving them uh, a lot of different skills in order to stand for their positions and talk with no fear. Having such a safe and uh, encouraging environment to talk and stand for their opinions was very important. Talking about gender in general uh, was quite a challenging thing because uh, it, it, it has a lot of stories that are related to stereotyping, different customs and traditions that we use to look at women in different ways. Uh, and maybe sometimes they are powerless, they don't have the ability to do something, they are very weak and all those kind of stuff. Um, but in the program, we tended to get uh, to different stages. So in the beginning, we worked on uh, sensitization just to go to be familiar with the concepts and the approaches and, and the, what are the different things related and maybe some misconception about gender. And then we went to another stage which is uh, going into finding where are we now? Uh, what is the media role in uh, uh, combating such stereotyping? Do we really uh, uh, produce uh, those um, uh, reliable and also uh, non-stereotype uh, uh, articles or are we still uh, supporting those uh, stereotyping models with without the, the full uh, knowledge or awareness so realizing where we are and then trying to check how can we improve uh, so we have tried to do it step by step for example checking where men and women in our news who are the main actors for example and uh, do we have enough uh, women as sources, in different terms like expert sources, um, decision maker sources. So we also try to give them some examples in order to expand their database, try to search for more uh, women to include their uh, views in the story. Inclusion doesn't happen overnight. It's something we all have to work together to break whatever we've been following for uh, tens of years, tens of hundreds of years. Um, Chloe, there were many initiatives on the ground and we supported many of these initiatives to provide Syrians with uh, reliable information. Can you tell us more about how we've done this? Well, over the five years, there were a lot of efforts being made, um, but to name a few, I can start with, for example, the audience research. Um, FPU invested in uh, multiple audience research um, be, to be carried out throughout the five years, which essentially uh, went to investigate what are the Syrian audiences throughout Syria in different areas of Syria, what are they uh, consuming in regards to media, and what are their, what are their needs in regards to um, information, uh, things relating to their everyday needs, lives, and rights. And, and we really helped uh, to facilitate feeding this information back to our media partners um, so that they could use this to inform their editorial line and to consistently uh, make sure that they're providing credible and relevant information that is up to date to their audiences across Syria, no matter where they are. I mean, this is one example. I mean, another example could be accountability um, tools that were created throughout the program, actually on the uh, leadership and initiative of the media partners themselves. Um, for instance, uh, there is a complaints mechanism that has just been developing in the last years of the program um, and is still in its development, but it's really one of its kind in the sector to be able to, for the audiences or for the general public to um, have a, a platform to be able to express when information may not be correct or verified and which continues to hold uh, media to account. One more thing maybe to mention is that FPU really focused on collaboration between media and the civil society organizations, so otherwise known as maybe on the ground NGO work. Um, 
But even though they might be doing different work, uh, there were so many similarities uh, and ways that they could complement each other. Uh, and there were multiple projects actually throughout this program which fostered a co-production of stories between the civil society organization who had so much knowledge and uh, on the on the ground from from the local communities they were working with who could provide maybe information or data to the media to be able to amplify their voices and to get their voices heard on on these platforms so yeah this was also a really great way to show uh, bridging gaps within the society and to continue getting out more information uh, from different sources and Mona the program has come to an end now um, of course, not all problems are solved, um, but can you highlight to us what were some important achievements from this program? The program comes to an end, but our dreams are not. So we are still uh, trying to find out what are the major achievements uh, and trying also to build on in the future. One of the things that I believe that we have made is that we managed to help creating this kind of transitional and stateless media framework where people are uh, not uh, uh, waiting for others to making that to make them uh, accountable or feel accountable rather than they are uh, holding the accountability to themselves as well uh, also maybe one of the achievements is um, putting all syrians on one table across divides and also getting them hearing each other and listening to each other and supporting being different uh, this will go for more sustainability in the future and they are now looking at uh, their media outlets not as a project rather than as a vision to be achieved uh, and looking for what kind of steps that they can take in order to still exist in the media ecosystem. Uh, this also is not done alone, it's now uh, done along with the new program which is the cohesion through independent and inclusive media. And also we are trying to continue this journey by collaborating with the, another project uh, with the, funded by EU, which is the ethical uh, journalism for sustainable peace. So all those programs are trying to come together in order to uh, build this new society that people can receive uh, the reliable information and they can work uh, for change, uh, development, uh, social rebuilding and cohesion. The journey of this program has been documented in a beautiful storytelling website. If you're interested, please check out www.ethicaljournalismsyria.org or just check the caption below. Thank you, Mona and Chloe, for joining me today. This was Studio Free Press Matters. See you next time. Bye.